Shedding Light on Curved Mirrors is the brilliant third program in the Shedding Light series of educational science videos. Using clear real life examples and superb animations, we explain how convex and concave mirrors produce images and why they're so useful. The program comes in five parts and includes two bonus features as well. In part A, we introduce the topic of curved mirrors and quickly recap on light reflection and image formation in flat mirrors. Part B covers convex mirrors. We compare the image formed in a convex mirror with the image formed in a flat mirror and explain the concept of field of view. We then look at some examples of the many uses of convex mirrors which can be found in car parks, in hospital corridors, and on cars and other vehicles. We also draw simple ray diagrams which clearly show why convex mirrors produce diminished images, that is, images which are smaller than life size. In part C, we explore the operation and uses of concave mirrors. Once again, we use real-life examples and excellent ray diagrams to give students a thorough understanding of how concave mirrors produce images. When the object is close to a concave mirror, it produces a magnified upright image. When the object is far from the mirror, specifically when it's further than the focal point of the mirror, the image produced is said to be real and can be projected onto a screen. This is the principle behind reflecting telescopes. Part D covers concave reflectors such as those used in satellite dishes. Concave reflectors can focus light and radio waves into a focal point which makes them very useful for long-range communications and for solar cookers. Here's a quick excerpt. Concave mirrors can also be used to concentrate sunlight. If the mirror is facing the sun, the point where the reflected light rays focus gets really, really hot. Hot enough to set fire to some dry leaves. A magnifying glass can focus light too, and you can use one to focus light to a tiny point but only a small amount of sunlight is concentrated. A large mirror like this one can focus a lot more light than a lens can, so you can have a far more useful heating effect. If I place a container of water at the focal point of the mirror, 60 centimeters from its vertex, the concentrated sunlight can bring the water to the boil. Within a few minutes, the temperature of the water passed 65 degrees Celsius, and then soon after past 80. Within about five minutes, the water had reached 100 and was boiling. The program then takes a look at the ability of concave reflectors to focus outgoing rays if the antenna or light source is placed at their focal point. Here's another quick excerpt. Torches or flashlights also make use of concave reflectors. The torch's light globe sits at the concave reflector's focal point. Any light travelling backwards ends up shining forwards in a tight beam, while the light shining forwards spreads out to illuminate the surroundings. If the reflector is removed, the light spreads out too much. With the reflector in place, the second light globe, which is identical to the first, appears much brighter. Headlights on cars, like these ones here, and this one here, use concave reflectors too. The globe is again placed at the focal point of a concave reflector, just like it is in a torch, and the light comes out in a fairly concentrated beam. But headlights go one step further than torches. To stop forward moving light from spreading out too much, an additional reflector is often used to reflect this light back towards the concave reflector, so that even more light then ends up shining more or less directly forward. 
This is a headlight's concave reflector. This is the lamp, which is also called a light globe or a light bulb. It's barely visible when it's in position, but this is what a typical one looks like. And this is the additional reflector. As you can see, different manufacturers use different designs. Not all of the light goes directly forward, but most of it does. The headlight, of course, is designed to allow the light to spread out a little so that it illuminates a fair amount of the road ahead. You can sort of see the shape of the beam here in the mist. The actual lamps themselves aren't really all that bright, but of course they seem really bright when all the light is being focused into a tight beam. The light a dentist uses to illuminate your mouth also uses a concave reflector. As do spotlights. In part E, we look into the strange world of linear convex and linear concave mirrors, but also take a look at a more serious example of their use. The first bonus feature introduces students to the mathematics of parabolas, explaining that every parabolic reflector has a focal length which you can determine mathematically. Students are then shown how to make their own parabolic reflector that they can use to heat up water. It's science, technology and mathematics all rolled up into one fantastic practical activity for your class. The second bonus feature shows students how to draw ray diagrams using the focus method. The animations are excellent and clearly show students how to determine the location and size of an object's image in any given circumstance. The video comes with question sheets, practical activities and teacher notes. Visit liakoseducationalmedia.com for more information about shedding light on curved mirrors and the Shedding Light series.